Okay, so let's go to, to vascular lesions. Why don't you take this one? I'll take this guy. All right. Let's not get um, it. Is it my turn? No. Not oh. Yet. Now we're going to get a hard one. To figure <laughs> <out>. <laughs> okay, Jonah. All right, so we've got these sagittal images of this patient's knee, and it actually looks like we have a brain kind of uh, post here, there, but we've got this... Yeah, spinal cord, we've got ventricles. Um, but yeah, this is a um, large aneurysm that uh, looks like a flop, probably. And yeah, it's scary. So we have a couple of images. Uh, the first one is in the sagittal plane, probably a stir image, and the second one is in the axial plane, probably a T1 weighted image. So I'm seeing a big, all right. So in this case, I'm seeing kind of a multi-lobulated uh, honeycomb kind of uh, structure involving the uh, dorsum, involving the uh, ventral aspect of the foot, the plantar aspect, the plantar aspect of the foot. And uh, I don't know whether that is a calcification on the T1 weighted image or not. Ah, uh -huh. what is that? Or is that a flebolith? I'm not quite sure if it is. Yeah, so number of flebolids, so it's likely to be a hemangioma or a low flow malform venous malformation. It's a follow up study. So, on the follow up study, it kind of appears and looks the same with no problem increase in the size. Yeah. So, this is a typical soft tissue. Okay. All right, Dan. Oh, oh, no, I guess I have to say. So, when you look at vascular lesions, they can be defined into malformations and tumors. We tend to use the term hemangioma for mal malformations. Mm -hmm. If you're a purist, uh, the hemangiomas are rare uh, endothelial tumors. Mm -hmm. And what we typically call uh, hemangiomas, which are very common, should be called vascular malformations, but most people don't do that. And they can be divided into low flow and high flow. The high flow would be the AVM, uh, like we saw in the first case. The low flow would be what we typically call malformations. And histologically, they can either be on the capillary side, the venous side, they can be in lymphatic, as you know, or they can be mixed between all those tissue types. And then you can actually get a rare benign endothelial prol proliferations, which is a, the true hemangioma. Uh, so it depends upon where you are, and you need to work with your referring physicians to make sure what nomenclature they use, but typically uh, most people put the low flow uh, common lesions as hemangiomas and the high flow as AVMs. Mal low flow malformations, you tend to get no signal voids, mm -hmm. which we didn't have. You, you get no AV shunting. It's a lobulated mass with a lot of fat in between the different lobules, as we saw on the hemangioma. You can get fluid lakes, especially in lymphatic variety. Flebolis, like we saw, are characteristic of the low flow states. You get a delayed contrast if you time it, do time intense contrast enhancement, which we really don't do much anymore. With the lymphatic, it tends to have a lot of non-enhancing voids in it that would fill in late, like at 30 minutes, which we typically don't do. So that's a low flow. If you get the high flow, you see a lot of signal voids. You tend not to see an enhancing mass, like we didn't really see a mass in that first case, and you get very rapid contrast enhancement. Okay. Uh, Dan. All right. So we've got two sagittal images. Looks like a, um, maybe a T2 and a PD bad set. Okay. Uh, looks like a. It's a um, T1 and a PD bad set. T1 and a PD bad set. So we got this kind of cystic mass uh, deep to the, maybe the first uh, metatarsal um, with a lot of fluid, fluid levels actually. Um, so again, you know, there is no like, you know, flow void uh, signal to, so this is, if anything, it's like a low flow um, vascular lesion. And actually it involves multiple compartments of the, the foot. Um, or or so multiple, uh, muscles, right? Muscles, right. Um, so again, uh, one of those vascular malformation, um, well, he mentioned, yeah. 
So again, this is really technically, it would be a low flow malformation, probably a venous malformation. The venal lymphatic malformation is more characteristic of the fluid fluid levels that we saw in this case, right? This would be very typical of a venous type malformation, okay. right? Because you have blood in it. Yeah. Lymphatic tend to have large areas of fluid, but you really, uh, I don't believe they typically have fluid levels because okay. you're not really dealing with blood, you're dealing with lymphatic tissue. Okay, uh, Max? Yeah, so we got a plain radiograph of the pelvis and femurs, and we have a bone, scan, bone scan. Um, I'm not seeing anything particular on the plain radiograph. Let me take a look more carefully. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing much there. So, okay, so we got MR. So no uptake on the, uh, on the bone uh, scan either. So now we're looking at uh, FST, T1, and post-contrast. So there's a uh, high signal intensity on T2, mixed signal intensity on T1, predominantly ISO intense, and it's uh, post-contrast enhancement. So this yeah, is uh, you, uh, you these areas of high signal, like you're saying on the T1 weighted image. That's important to note. Right. So there's some high signal intensity. And the areas of high signal on the T1 weighted images are, are low on T2. Low on the T2 fat suppressed images. So that means that must be calcifications in there. And. Well, uh, wait, wait a second. Calcium would be dark on both, right? Uh, well, sometimes calcium can be bright on T1 as well, right? A milk of but calcium can. The calcium itself is not what's bright. It's the substance around it. So if you have an ossification, then it's the fat inside the ossification that's bright. If it's milk of calcium, it's more the fluid content uh, that the calcium is in. Right. Well, then the other thing is it could be a, some form of blood product. Uh, that is high on T1. So, mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, this may be a large uh, uh, hemangioma. And then there's kind of a, a, a funny enhancement pattern too on the post gadolinium study. Again, it'd be nice to have the T1 fats at pre. This is what the ultra noise and the pathology showed. Max? Did you want me to come? You want me to comment on the pathology? <laughs> Why don't you comment on, on the ultrasound? <laughs> ultrasound? I don't see an ultrasound. Oops, shit. I didn't mean to show it's that to you, but I did. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just saw it. Okay. No, no, no. That was my fault. It was I had enlarged the image, and I didn't see your uh, ultrasound image because uh, I'm looking at it on my cell phone. So we have on ultrasound, we have a, uh, a, uh, uh, a well-rounded structure that has uh, linear areas of hyper hyperechoic uh, septations and uh, and uh, kind of heterogeneous in ecotexture overall so almost as the appearance of what you see in uh, in like a uh, what kind of flow in it? let's see there's no flow in it so this is a low flow state uh, vascular malformation so okay. maybe a hemangioma That's what the pathology looks like and this is a cavernous hemangioma so another probably venous side malformation and it's a hematoma with a lot of thrombi within it. Okay. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of this case? Okay, so August uh, 1st, uh, 2005, and this is the possibly wrist, I'm not sure. I think uh, it's, it's, the shoulder, it's the arm, it's the upper shoulder? arm and a young oh. child. Okay, upper arm and a young child. So we have the uh, T1 and stir and uh, another stir image looks like. So this is a mass on the uh, anterior aspect, the maybe humerus there. It's it's pretty much a iso intense to muscle, uh, and there's a large area of uh, hyper intensity with yeah, the it's structure. Soft tissue is not in the humerus, right? It's anterior to the humerus or soft tissues. Okay, good. Looks like there's some maybe some tight yeah T2 hyper intense foci. Also within this, and maybe, and also some septations uh, on the T uh, two. There's a T two axial. T one. I, I, I think T one axial. I think this is T one, and this is probably a stir. Okay. And again, we're seeing this. Uh, the majority of this uh, mass is uh, relatively iso intense to muscle, and uh, the, there's a few areas of T one hyper intensity here, a little bit, and then. Uh, there's a heterogeneous uh, hyperintense uh, signal on the stir image. 
uh, this uh, frontal radiograph, and this is uh, August 21st, 2008, so about three years later, uh, there is definitely there, there's a suggestion of a mass uh, on this radio. There's definitely a mass within the uh, in the soft tissues. Uh, looks like the cortex and the humerus looks pretty well preserved, um, and there are uh, little uh, you know calcifications uh, compatible with flevolus yes, also within all. this lesion. So we started so, this, and, and these are probably little flevolus within it. So so that's kind of very very helpful when you see that. And then some uh, fat w within it also, which is typical of the malformations. And then there, there we typically see the flebolus, and we can see now that it's grown. And you can see the flebolus now with uh, MR on a higher field system. And notice that this is right. much uh, sharply defined now on a higher field system. Again, we see that area of fat within it. So what do you think this is? I think this is another... Uh like a malform maybe a, maybe a vascular, most likely a vascular malformation could be a, maybe a lymphangium or as well. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have the big yeah. flow voids in it, but uh, th this is yeah. the the, the flebolus are very characteristic of a venous malformation, which we all call hemangioma. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so here's a nine-year-old female with a uh, right thigh mass for seven years. Uh, she's got some tenderness, I guess, and uh, has not been enlarging. Uh, so we've got some um, ultrasound of the area of uh, clinical concern. Uh, we're seeing this sort of um, heterogeneous uh, low slash hypochoic uh, area in the uh, region of concern. And yeah, kind of there, a little bit hyper there, but no flow, but no flow yeah, on uh, Doppler evaluation. Um, so here we are. MR looks like we've got probably a T1 uh, stir and maybe PDF. Uh, I think there's a T1 stir and a T1 fat sap post. Fat sap post, okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, well, it is uh, markedly hyper um, intense on our stir, kind of intermediate low on T1. Um, I don't really want to say 100% that there's enhancement, but without the, but I mean, there certainly probably is a so little bit. Well, I'm not seeing any uh, hypo-intense uh, foci like uh, flebolithes. Uh, it could still be uh, a low-flow vascular malformation, so, so although... We kind of see the kind of fat going into it in mm -hmm. that are pretty characteristic of a malformation. But there is another lesion that could look just like this. This could be some kind of uh, lymphatic uh, malformation but, yeah, as well. Malformations. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, so oh, okay, yeah. But yeah. the other thing that could look like this in the skin are plexiform neurofibromas. That's the guy, yeah. So, uh, okay. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. see some of those, but, but that's the other thing that can look like this. Is that when you see this kind of elongated, they, plexiform neurofibromas tend to be large. Mm -hmm. They tend to have fat kind of going into the margins that are uh, ill-defined like this. So, it, But those patients almost always have a known diagnosis of neurofibromatosis. So that's that's okay. a little bit helpful. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that one. So that's a lymphangioma. <laughs> nice. So we've talked about malformations in there. Okay. So this is a 52-year-old uh, female with decades-old mass with increasing mass and pain for two years. So I just have a single image T1 uh, fat saturated pre-contrast image. So I'm kind of seeing a circumferential. Uh, soft tissue right along uh, the ulna, which kind of spares with a, with the tendon. A lot of enhancement, right? <laughs> no enhancement yet. <laughs> and on the post uh, contrast images, that area enhances avidly with uh, another area, which kind of does not enhance, kind of seems to be necrotic, but I'm not quite sure. And the tendons are kind of displaced to the periphery of the lesion. It may not necessarily be necrotic. If it were a malignant lesion, then mm -hmm. it would probably be necrosis. But this is really going around both bones. That's mm -hmm. almost abnormal soft tissue there. So. And uh, then I have the same image in uh, the coronal plane where I see that it is almost circumferentially involving the entire radius and ulna and plus and a again, peripheral zone of... Here's the pre and there's the post. And again, <laughs> I keep mentioning this all over and over again. If you, if you, if you, if you just had this image and it was post, you'd uh -huh. say it's all enhancing. Yeah. But in, 
but you can see you can again see how that can be misfusing. Okay, this turned so out another to be lymphatic malformation. malformation. And again, you're seeing those big lakes in it, okay. which are very characteristic, which you don't really see very much in the venous side. You get smaller ones, but not the big ones big. like this. Typical lymphatic. Okay, Dan. Uh, we look at. <clears throat> sorry, we have a 25-year-old male. Um, no history, but we got an ultrasound. Uh, looks like an oblong, um, kind of mostly hypoechoic lesion, kind of inferior, inferiorly there is like, you know, more hyperechoic with posterior acoustic shadowing. And they put the Doppler on this lesion, which shows uh, both looks like arterial and venous flow, just multi-directional flow within this. And we have this MR uh, angiogram of the lower extremity, where it shows there's a kind of like a hyper-intensing hyper mass uh, looks like on the medial side of the foot, which is actually has a feeder arterial vessel. So I'm worried about an AVM uh, with a nidus. Yeah, that's a pretty big mass for an AVM. You know, typically they oh. give, you don't really. Or see it could that. be like, oh, okay. Because um, was. A... So th this turned out to be as far as a mass from, okay. with a feeder and then a bunch of draining veins. Right. So for this one, you would say it's still a low flow lesion, right? Or would it be still a low flow lesion? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Max. Yes. So we got a 15 year old female with a papal mass right arm, 10 year ago mass excision at the same site. Okay. So plain radiograph for the chest. It's the right arm. Oh, I'm sorry, right arm. So plain reading of the chest, the right arm. Um, there's some soft tissue prominence, but I'm not uh, appreciating anything else between when compared. Yeah, so the right shoulder and right chest wall soft tissue is a little more prominent than the left side. Okay, so we have a T1, T2, and post contrast showing a vascular lesion. Uh, well, I mean, showing an enhancing lesion uh, okay. on um, that's fairly uh, poorly defined. Uh, so, let's see here. So on the coronals, again, so it shows enhancement. It has some low signal intensity areas within it and high signal intensity on two, T2. Uh, um, okay. So Yeah, so maybe some folibolips in there. So well, maybe it's a... Wait a second. Mm -hmm. We can see that this is probably metal artifact. Remember, this patient had prior surgery. If they had, had prior so surgery, I would agree with you that these might be folibolips. But these have a little bit more of the characteristic of metal artifact, even though okay. X-ray didn't show it. But we know MR is much more sensitive. It's probably artifact from the prior surgery the patient had. All right, so this must be a recurrent vascular lesion, maybe a. Um, so there's the pathology, and so it's maybe a lymphatic channel, lymphatic malformation. So this is so this Papillary is more of a true hemangioma. I didn't know what oh. to use the term for, but it's probably better to call it uh, hyperplasia. It's a benign lesion of the blood vessels, tumor of the blood vessels. It's also called Maison's tumor. And uh, there are varieties that have been described. So. Okay, uh, Jeff. All right, uh, 60 year old male with a left hand mass, you know, two radiographs to the left hand, and it looks like, it, and this is uh, soft tissue, rounded soft tissue density, uh, and along the ulnar aspect, the hand probably overlying the fourth and fifth rays. Uh, and then we have the, uh, let's see, is this a stir image, uh, and T1, and maybe a post contrast uh, fat suppressed image here. Uh, so it looks like we have uh, some heterogeneous signal within this uh, pretty well demarcated lesion uh, in the soft tissues. Is uh, you know predominantly hyper T type intense and uh, you know, T1 hypo intense with some uh, internal uh, maybe septations within it. And those look like uh, well, that's not really fat suppressed. I can't really say it's tone enhancement. Uh, the axial uh, images uh, again demonstrate uh, you know T2 or stir hyper intensity. So, Maybe some internal septations with it. It's definitely a heterogeneous lesion. Uh, again, fairly well demarcated. Uh, at this point, it looks like there is 
some mild interdigitation within the into the uh, fourth and fifth rays, but the cortex the appears to be right preserved into the bone. Into the bone, the, yeah, the cortex in the bone, the, at least at this level, appears to be preserved. Doesn't look like it's really invading uh, or causing erosions there. And okay, so yeah, I mean it's so you know, again the differential myoma. So this is a very mm -hmm. vascular tumor of the uh, of the uh, uh, non-skeletal muscle there, of the uh, smooth muscle. Okay. Okay. So here's a 47-year-old female with a uh, palpable mass, and looks like we've got uh, multiple um, axial images. We've got T1, I guess. PDFS and then pre and post, but um, that's, that's probably the post. PDFS out there, yeah. So, uh, well, we do have this uh, kind of well circumscribed uh, oval mass, uh, which, yeah, there it is again. So, like, T2 maybe FS, but um, yeah. So it does seem to be oh, okay. Okay, so now we're getting this uh, kind of heter heterogeneous, hyper intense with uh, some debris, uh, and it looks like it, or just sort of uh, intermediate. Okay, well here it is on uh, ultrasound, and uh, we are still seeing that it's somewhat well defined, although I'm seeing some kind of indistinct margins on uh, some of the uh, images there. It's mostly hypoechoic with kind of heterogeneous signal, and uh, we do have uh, Quite an impressive uh, vascular component on uh, Doppler, uh, sort of surrounding it, yeah, or perhaps even feeding it uh, or adjacent to it. Um, and yeah, I think that probably corresponds with this uh, blood vessel we're seeing kind of coursing uh, along it. Um, and this could be another vascular malformation. Oh, okay. So here it is on gross and. Um, <laughs> It does look gross. It's quite red. Oh, it's sarcoma. Yikes. It looks like strawberries. <laughs> You'd be a good pathologist. Yeah. Actually, they like food. <laughs> okay. So let's go into parasitic lesions now. Okay, so T1 uh, image in the sagittal plane and uh, uh, axial plane and a T2 image in an axial plane. So. T1. So there is evidence of a very well-defined oval uh, lesion kind of involving the distal phalanx. I can't see the bone very well uh, in the axial images as well. It's, it's kind of completely eroded. So I would be concerned for uh, uh, either a glomus tumor or an epidermal inclusion cyst, perhaps. Yes. And in this location, this is typical of a glomus tumor. tumor. Yeah, but those, that's, those are two things to think about. Uh, but in this location, a glomus is by far the most likely. Okay. And then uh, this is kind of the anatomy of the nail bed. These typically occur in the nail bed and, uh, and in the subugual <coughs> region here. And tumors there, glomus tumor is by far the most common. So you can also get subungual exostoses, chondromas, uh, and these and hemangiomas, epidermoid cysts, mucoid cysts. Inclusion cysts uh, would be in a different location because you usually don't stick yourself through the nail. Mm -hmm. Can I guess? But <laughs> <laughs> the malignant varieties you can get squamous cell carcinomas here and also melanoma. Okay, Dan. Yeah, we got a 32-year-old male with pain for one year. Um, so we got a frontal and lateral radiograph of the foot. Um, we see a lot of looks like a big soft tissue mass or thickening of the heel, heel fat pad. Um, and I don't see any obvious bone finding. So, on the multiple kind of axial and coronal images, it looks like this uh, hyper intense lesion um, embedded within the looks like a adductor digitum minimi muscle. Um, how to expand how to infiltrate it. Okay, so um, we, we saw some fibrous lesions that looked a lot like right. this in this particular yeah. location. 
So they excised it. So they excised it. Uh, <laughs> it looks like, I'm not sure, it's like a muscle. Uh, it's a lot of it, like uh, blue cells, so it's pretty, I'm guessing it's like a malignant. Oh, glomus tumor. This turned out to be a rare location for another glomus tumor. So, oh, okay. So, again, don't get <laughs> Don't get too cocky and just describing the histo histology of lesions on an MR. I oh, know. <laughs> okay. And a bunch of things here. Okay. Uh, uh, Me. Max. Yeah, Max. Yep. So, uh, two images of the knee, um, T1 and T2. There's a high signal intensity lesion on T2 and low signal ISO intense on T1 at the tendon insertion of probably the gluteus medius. No, I'm sorry, it's lateral. So gluteus uh, lateral uh, belly of the Not the uh, gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, mm, do we have any post contrast? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any post contrast images? Um, yes, I don't know. I don't know so far what this could be. This is um, looks probably has some uh, mixoid uh, type of uh, uh, cystic for sure. See, see how it's kind uh, of speculated around the edges. Yeah. You know, what, do, what do we see here every day? We see, we see, uh, uh, we see ganglion sister. Yeah. So this one wouldn't be it. Time. And that's what this was thought to be. If you look at some of the images, however, the margins, typically ganglion cystia, they're either multi very defined. but the margins are very sharp and smooth and defined, and they aren't here. See kind of how speculated these are? So that may be one indication that you're not deep in lesion here. This turned out to be hemangioendothelioma, and this patient died of metastatic disease about four and a half months after this MR scan was a That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So... Uh, that's the only one I've seen like this. But there are some other lesions you can see there that are bad, but they're rare. So why don't we go into chondroosseous. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of this one? 39-year-old male, slow-growing, right ankle mass, passes through operation due to the right ankle mass three years ago. So outside MR, uh, T1, uh, T2, like uh, maybe fat sat, maybe no, it's not really even fat sat. Uh, anyway, so it looks like there's this lesion, a well demarcated lesion with septations, with some uh, mild, uh, some T2 hyperintensity, uh, mild. It looks like, and and then uh, it looks like it's associated with the uh, talus, it might be causing some er some erosion or uh, at least the posterior aspect there, and. This is seen as a chondroma. Okay. So they called this a chondroma three years ago. They had surgery. Okay. Now the patient All right. is back, and these are the x-rays. Okay, he's back with... So on the x-rays, it looks like in a similar region, in a posterior to the talus, we have a soft tissue mass. Uh, <clears throat> and... Okay, so now we have the uh, see T1 and STIR and looks like uh, T1 fat set uh, post contrast. So again, we have a uh, uh, fairly well. Well, there's a, le a lesion here with some uh, lobulations and some internal septations. Kind of fairly T1. It's pretty much T1 hypo intense and T2 hyper intense, and uh, possibly some peripheral enhancement. But we need a fat set, just to be sure. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure as much. Yeah. Enhance. This is a maybe. This is a typical chondroid type mass. It's very kind okay. of smudgy and more or less uniform. Uh, and it's not like enhancing. It's not enhancing. Uh, yeah. There's some irregularity here, but remember this patient had surgery before. So some of this bony irregularity could be surgery, but you have to be concerned about the fact that this could be extrinsically eroding the bone, uh, which makes it more of more concern if it's eroding bone. And here's what, so I guess there's a little bit of peripheral enhancement here on, on these studies. This obviously is a much bigger mass than was present three years ago, and this turned out to be a chondrosarcoma. So it's hard to determine. It's really, I don't think we can accurately 
a lot of these differentiate the malign and malignant. This is a pretty good sized mass, even back here, uh, with maybe some erosion of the bone in this location as well. So uh, I think in these you've, you've got to be very have a very high index of suspicion. Uh, in these these larger chondroid lesions, they're, fa they're fairly uncommon, fortunately. Dr. Caruso, isn't that uh, one of the risks of surgery? Is that you can develop some form of con chondrosarcoma? I, I thought I read that somewhere many many years back. Is there a risk or no? Because of the surgery? No, I don't think the surgery causes it. I think they probably have a chondrosarcoma, and it grows back because it's a malignant lesion, and they didn't get all of it. I don't really think surgery induces a malignant transformation. Radiation therapy might, but I don't think surgery does. Okay. So here's a lateral radiograph of an 18-year-old female with a left foot mass, and uh, along the plantar aspect of the heel, we're seeing this uh, here, the increased uh, density there, maybe even a little calc or something in it. Uh, here we are in MR, and it looks like we've got uh, sagittal T1, PDFS, and uh, probably T1FS post-contrast. Um, and we're seeing this uh, oval-shaped uh, hypo-intense lesion with a uh, couple of foci of hyper-intense signal. Um, it's got mostly pretty good margins, although we've got a little bit of uh, maybe speculation along the uh, little thing there. It's, yeah, the signal is, oh, okay. Well, okay. This is much lower signal intensity throughout it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it doesn't really look calcified here. So this is a kind of a densely fibrous type lesion. Huh. I wouldn't have called it uh, uh, chondroma, just looking yeah. at it. I would, I would think yeah, in sure terms didn't. of a fibrous type lesion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it was an extra skeletal chondroma. <laughs> Right. So Forty year old female, uh, chief complaint of palpable mass in the right inguinal region for eleven years, which has been enlarging recently. So I've got series of MR images in the axial and in the coronal plane where I see a fairly well defined uh, kind of irregular mass. I can see the margins but not that very well, which is hypo intense kind of on T one and hyper intense with some um, intermediate areas interspersed between with some septations as well all right so we have an angiography image where i kind of just along the region of that mass i see a complete that is post occlusion i guess the image and right. this is pre this is pre embolized this is the arterial phase this is the venous phase okay so arterial phase and venous phase so in the venous phase it kind of takes no supply in the arterial phase I don't see much. So, so it, may, it may have a little thinning of the vessel here. Okay. And then here it looks like there's splaying of the veins around it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So extra skeletal chondrosarcoma. Okay. Something you can see every day. <laughs> okay, Dan. Another extra skeletal. <laughs> 68 year old female with shoulder mass uh, excision at local clinic, clinic two weeks ago. Get your mass is excised in Korea. <laughs> yeah. So there's a question of uh, MFH. And then, uh, so on the fr frontal radiograph of the shoulder, um, I don't see any osseous lesion, but there is maybe a little soft tissue uh, thickening, just kind of uh, superficial to the distal clavicle. I don't know if that's where the surgery was then uh, so we have MRI where we see so I mean, I can't, I can't. and then so on this MRI looks like um, posterity in the subcutaneous fat and also the muscle um, like looks like the lateral the posterior deltoid maybe just a little more okay. there is a uh, enhancement um, uh, ill-defined enhancement and there's like a nodular enhancement more uh, distally um, in the triceps looks like muscle so the ultrasound actually shows this kind of like round well circumscribed lesion but no significant uh, acoustic enhancement or shadowing so so this like looks like a, maybe a solid mass and that they wouldn't biopsy needle uh, and it was the exoskeletal osteosarcoma <laughs> 
Why did you make this diagnosis? It's obvious. I said it was extra skeletal, but I couldn't say the second word. <laughs> and this is two months later. Two months later, it looks like that got bigger uh, from what we had. It's more nodular, maybe it has like some hemorrhage and necrosis, and maybe some bone formation given those decreased signal. But on the CT, it doesn't show um, calcification, so I'm guessing this is all like hemorrhage and necrosis. Okay. So let's go on to neurogenic tumors. Uh, now, talking a little bit about nerve anatomy, you've got the individual axons, which are uh, covered by myelin sheath and endometrium. They are bunched together kind of into the different nerve fibers, which are separated by the perineurium. And, uh, and this would be one fascicle. And then uh, often in the middle of, you have the artery and vein in the middle of the nerve and you have multiple fascicles which make up the nerve. So uh, this is not an eyeball, but uh, uh, Max, what do you think this is? All right, let's see if I can do this blindfold, but with my eyes closed. There's a high signal intensity uh, on uh, fluid sensitive yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see your mouth. Your mouse. Uh, where are we anyway? I can't this is the optic nerve. Light bulb. Oh, is that the eye? <laughs> no, no, this is the back of the knee, by the way. Back of the knee, okay, that helps a lot more. Uh, so it's a very well defined mass with some peripheral area of low signal intensity, pretty much hyper intense throughout. Looks like it's coming from a nerve. Uh, so. Maybe it's uh, some form of a, uh, oh, there we go. So we got uh, MR sequences, uh, T, is that? Uh, I'm not sure what that six, six, signal intensity on left one. It's maybe T1. T1. So it's ISO intense. Fat, sir. Yeah, so it is it is in the area of the uh, popliteal artery and vein. And so probably the neurovascular bundle, fairly well defined, probably benign, benign uh, lesion, uh, maybe a um, lymphangioma or, oh, perineural. Neural cyst. Okay. So this is a cyst raising, and this is a tibial nerve. The tibial nerve you can see is markedly thickened as well around this this particular location. But this just turned out to be a cyst. Okay, uh, Jeff. <clears throat> okay, so we have 58 year old female with perineal nerve palsy, and sonographic images uh, demonstrating a, a hypoechoic uh, mass. Uh, in the soft tissues with uh, through transmission, so it's a, so it's a con fluid containing lesion. T1 weighted, coronal, coronal T, T2 weighted, GAD. Uh, <clears throat> and so it's pretty, it's fairly elongated, and it's got some mild lobulations to it. Uh, and this is uh, in the, let's say, uh, it's got some, it's basically a T1, uh, uh, homogeneous T1 hypo intense, T2 hyper intense. And uh, some peripheral enhancement, which confirms its uh, cystic nature. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> axial T1, let's see, or T2, uh, T1. And, and so again, it's demonstrating this, uh, it's in the popliteal fossa. This, this, still, uh, this is a little bit more proximal. No, wait a second. No, no. This is proximal, and this is progressive distal. Okay, so, oh, again, it's uh, it's pretty well, it's well circumscribed, and uh, T1 homogeneously hypo intense, and demonstrating uh, T2 hyper intensity is kind of, uh, with maybe some, maybe some mild. Uh, uh, so, what are your thoughts? So, I mean, in this uh, area, we're talking about uh, maybe another type of uh, ganglion cyst uh, involving the. Uh, uh, Perineal nerve. Or... Okay, so so let's just say this nerve right here is the nerve. Okay. Then what kind of cyst would you see like this? What's it caused by? Are you? Is it? Uh, oh, it's it's. Well, it's, uh, in this case here, isn't it like a? It's like a perineal uh, nerve cyst, right? Uh. Or... Okay, yeah, the answer is kind of yes. Uh, this is what it looked like. And you can see that there is a cyst that's going out along the nerve. And 
that this was a ganglion cyst. Now, most of these occur coming from the proximal tibiofibular joint space, where you get a ganglion cyst coming out of the joint space, and just a second. Uh, and it will, will track into the nerve and then it'll track up proximally from the nerve. I've seen maybe two or three over the last 10 years here. It's pretty uncommon, but it's very characteristic. And uh, there's actually a surgeon at the Mayo Clinic who kind of specializes in, in these lesions, so it's best to send them to him. I believe he's at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, but these are uh, cysts. Uh, and uh, if we get, I probably won't this year, but if we got to it, I have uh, several others that have, and you can actually follow it coming out of the proximal tibial fibular mm -hmm. joint space. They've been described rarely elsewhere in the body, but these are ganglion cysts that go in and grow along the nerve. Okay. So you only see them around the knee area, I presume? I've actually seen one one other place, and I'm trying to remember where it was, but the vast majority that I've seen have been around the knee. They're, they're rare anywhere, but they're extremely rare outside of the, uh, the knee going proximally up the thigh, like that one. Okay, so here we have an axial stir image of a patient's foot, and between it looks like the um, third and fourth uh, metatarsals and digits. We've got this area of uh, brisk, hyper-intense uh, signal right there. Okay, and yeah, here we have it on uh, coronals, probably T1 and stir again. It's got this nice kind of uh, hypo intermediate hypo-intense uh, signal on T1. It's got this kind of dumbbell configuration, well circumscribed, uh, kind of pushing between those. Uh, this would be a good location for Morton Neuroma. Um, this looks like the other foot, and it looks like uh, we've got a couple more. I guess you could have multifocal bilateral. Okay. All right. And they're not neuromas, as we talked about before. These are traumatic injuries to the nerve and scarring. All right. So for the next case, I have a couple of T1 images in axial and in the sagittal plane. Uh, I see kind of a very well-defined uh, um, oval structure, which is kind of intermediate on T1 and hyper-intense on uh, the T2-weighted images, just posterior to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. So it lies along kind of the gastrocnemius capsule. So. I found that somebody from the East Coast just came into town and thought they had dinner plans. So let me straighten this out just for a second. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I kind of see that oval uh, T1 uh, intermediate and T2 hyperintense structure, which is like just posterior to the meniscus. Oh, uh, okay. There's this thing over here. And the, the nerve, okay. This, this is what I want to. Uh, okay, so the nerve is kind of really enlarged, and I can uh, see the proper nerve pattern within. Don't see any structures getting attached to it, just the nerve that is enlarged, kind of. All right, so going uh, kind of uh, uh, more anti or distally so that nerve kind of expands to you know become really really large and fusiform with the kind of intermediate signal or, here or could that be muscle there that we're seeing could be muscle i guess could be the medial head of the gastron oh so okay <laughs> this so well most of the fibrolipomatous hematomas we're familiar with are really in the wrist right mm -hmm, yeah the, Median nerve. And the median nerve of the wrist. This was one of the tibial nerve, and you have denervation then, changes okay. of the peripheral uh, of the muscles. So rather than terming this denervation, we are calling it fibrolapimitous hematoma. The, the denervation was due to the hematoma of the okay. nerve. Okay. Uh, Dan. 
Okay, we got two chrono images of the ankle. Um, these still, uh, well, it looks like we have a kind of like round slash kind of oval mass, which is T1 iso to muscle, but um, PD had said hyper intense, um, which I guess is again, um, I'm trying to see. Now, I uh, the medial thing. Hopefully you can see it. We can't really see it on, on uh, the uh, projected screen, but we can see it nicely on the on the computer. There's actually an homogeneous signal intensity with this, right? Region, as opposed to the cyst that we saw before, which was very right. homogeneous. And uh, this kind of looks like a linear structure before it. And if you actually had a couple of other images, there'd be a linear structure coming up here out of it. Um, could be a neurofibroma. And, oh, okay. So now this is much better. So on the axial images, it looks like um, where the flexor halus's longest um, muscle is. Uh, there's this kind of like a hyper intense, kind of like slightly heterogeneous uh, lesion, uh, which is adjacent to those uh, neurovascular bundle. Um, yeah. So so here are the two veins in the artery. Right. So what do you think this is? So again, it's like a nerve uh, tumor. Um, it doesn't have the fat um, like signal, so it's more like a, a more solid mass. Um, so I'm guessing, I guess it could be neurofibroma or schwannoma, one of yeah, those two. This nerve was schwannoma, tumor. right? Uh, posterior tibial nerve schwannoma. Okay. okay, Max. So we got a 43-year-old female with right thigh mass for three months. Waiting for the images. Are there any images? Oh, there we go. So we got a. The first image is a plain radiograph, showing demonstrating some increased soft tissue density on the right side, um, on the right thigh, and then on the right image, it's a T1. Uh, there is increase. There is a solid appearing uh, iso intense mass deep to the adductor magnus muscle. And uh, hyper intense structures in it. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty uh, pretty homogeneous in signal on the T1, and then it's high signal on T2 with some iso a large amount of iso intense on C2. So that shows a lot of solid this, components. This is the T1 that's at post. This is the T2. T2. So this is it's got the it's got that kind of a smudgy appearance to it. Um, I'm thinking about maybe a, a nerve rich shift tumor like a schwannoma, a very large schwannoma in this case, um, or a neurofibroma. Um, PET. So there's some activity on PEDs for sure in the periphery. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't light up really like a light bulb. Right. There, there it is. Is it a nice cut session? Yeah. So the areas that are higher in T1 weighted image are hemorrhagic. Uh, oh, okay. And then there's the tissue. You're all experts in histology, I know. And uh, this was a, <laughs> what's called a giant schwann. Okay, Jeff? A 43-year-old male with a buttock mass, uh, axial T1, uh, T2, uh, stir images, demonstrating a Mass in the gluteus, the muscles. That's uh, T1 relative T1 homogeneously hypointense uh, with some uh, again T1 uh, T2 hyperintense uh, with the uh, now is that post contrast actually the last one there I think um, okay. so, I think it, or no it probably is post contrast yeah it's probably so it's probably heterogeneously enhancing uh, lesion then uh, now this lesion on the coronal images uh, is well demarcated. Uh, there is uh, maybe some associated uh, edema within the uh, musculature uh, surrounding the mass. And then the uh, sonographic images, so again, well demarcated with some posterior acoustic enhancement through transmission. Uh, and there's no, see, we do have Doppler, there's no vascularity associated with this. And uh, it's, okay, I was gonna say maybe another type of schwannoma. Yeah. So, 56-year-old male with uh, low back pain for a year. Uh, we've got uh, radiograph, uh, CT, and uh, MR. 
also uh, angiography and uh, gross sample, all of this uh, thing here, and it seems to be, um, okay, you know, this is a very good look. Yeah, so it's causing compression of the uh, vertebral body there, and we see that pretty well on the uh, coronal MR images too. Um, seems to, yeah, it definitely has vascularity on the um, on the angiogram. Uh, good location for paraganglioma. Uh, what else can do this? Oh, okay. So it looks like we've got extra axial uh, mass there as well. Um, you could got multiple, and you could have multiple. Uh, Gangliomas, I guess. That would... Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so for the next case, uh, single image uh, in coronal planes uh, with uh, stir weighting, so just a thigh mass. So I'm kind of seeing that uh, fairly ill-defined hyperintense uh, signal which is involving almost the entire of the medial and the anterior compartment of the uh, thigh. So on uh, T1 pre and T1 post, the mass is kind of enhancing. Uh, not avidly, but it's enhancing for sure. Uh, with such a large mass, which is like encompassing the both the compartments. I would so you're seeing some septa. Septa, and some yeah. Fat fine septa. Uh -huh. So you need, next thing you need to just look for flea bullets. Yeah. So there are no flea bullets as such in this case. Okay. Uh, so again, like another uh, coronal and axial images, kind of just hyper intense signal. Uh, is that contrast enhanced image, the second one? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we don't have a pre, but I think that's pretty enhancing for sure. Uh, no flare bullets even in this case. I'm going towards the vascular condition, but I am not quite sure. Could be a nerve related. In the neuro section. Could be a nerve related. So I would think in terms of neurofibroma. Dan? <laughs> uh, 53 year old female with right, right foot pain and swelling for 10 days after incisional biopsy at local clinic. Um, there's a right foot dorsal mass and about five centimeter diameter. Okay. So on this frontal radiograph, we just see this kind of like uh, round soft tissue mass projecting over the um, Third, um, second through fifth PIP, I'm sorry, MTP joints. On this uh, MRI, we see this. Uh, you know, actually, this is like a pretty a big mass with heterogeneous signal. Probably some hemorrhage within it or calcification. Actually, not calcification because the radiograph didn't show any. So there's a lot of mass with uh, uh, probably hemorrhagic uh, necrosis in the middle. Um, so again, in the terms of like neural tumor, uh, if this patient, so it was like, this is all post biopsy, like it, it was found, Dr. Cruz? Yeah. It was like, uh, so, so the mass was there or this is just developed after biopsy? What developed after biopsy? I'm saying like there was a mass and they biopsied it or there was something smaller and after biopsy uh, everything like there was a mass and they biopsied it and then uh, the patient came uh, to the referral center. Okay, so on this sagittal images it just looks like very um kind of hypervascular mass with areas of uh, necrosis centrally. Um and then I'm I'm worried about about the problem the good thing is that the adjacent bone is not uh, there's no erosion or okay. destruction, but there is, uh, again, vascular, uh, this ultrasound images actually show some, a lot of peripheral, but there is also central um, vascularity. So it's like a, a very vascular lesion, um, given that, you know, it's probably like another, either plexiform neurofibroma or another uh, large, yes, so this patient actually has maybe like, it's like a neurofibromatosis. Uh, it's a lot of nerve, uh, enlarged coming out from the facets. Yeah, it's like more on the right side than the left. I mean, just more the right side, actually. Um, all these uh, nerve roots coming out. So, nerve fiber. Okay, good. Okay, and then uh, so this is just some data on uh, neurofibromatosis. 
Would you see more like symmetrical than being like unilateral with the neurofibromatosis? Neurofibromatosis can, uh, can be extremely variable. And it's, oh. it's not typically symmetric. Okay, uh, Max. All right, so we got um, four images of the knee, uh, T1 and T2, uh, demonstrating a large mass overlying the skin, predominantly homogeneously, in, uh, I, uh, homogeneously ISO intense on T1 and six cent, very high intense on T2 with its sequence. Uh, well, we're in the neurofibroma section, so this could be a large neurofibroma um, on the skin. And on the sagittal, same, similar findings with the homogeneous signal on t uh, iso intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2 and has vascularity. So, probably a large neurofibroma. Yeah, you can see these little striated pattern in it. Yeah, this turned out to be a malignant peripheral nourishing tumor. Yeah, and it's hard to differentiate malignant from benign. So you have to, when they're large lesions with neurofibromatosis, plexiform neurofibroma can be benign and extremely large, but you always have to be concerned about the malignant variety. And it's uh, neurofibromatosis one, and it typically is, this is another example of plexiform neurofibroma and neurofibromatosis one. Uh, you can get more of diffuse kind of neurofibroma here, uh, which you can see going along there. Signs to look for malignancy, if it's greater than five centimeters, you have to be concerned about it, but that's not a great sign. If they get peripheral enhancement, heterogeneous signal intensity on T1-weighted image. If you get edema around it, that's on the PD facet images or stir images, that's not common if it's outside the lesion on the benign ones. And then uh, if you have cystic components, you have to be a little bit concerned. But uh, the bottom line is you can't really tell with imaging. You need to determine the extent, and then you have to clinically have to determine how to get aggressive about these. Okay, uh, Jeff, what do you think of this one? Okay, 23 female uh, with aggravating craft swelling for 12, several weeks, and uh, T1. T2 post contrast, uh, so this uh, heterogeneous uh, lesion, the well demarcated lesion, the uh, it's like in the uh, uh, gastrocnemius muscle, or plant. and uh, the it's got a so there's uh, again it's pretty complex. There's some but there's like the appearance there. Some T1 uh, hyper intensity T2 and T1 so hypo intensity and T2 hyper intensity crazy. there. Right. Um, and centrally within it, maybe it's uh, hem I was going to say maybe it's some hemorrhage. Uh, so. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, why don't we stop here, and we'll finish up this kind of periphery uh, review, I mean, an overview of soft tissue tumors, uh, hopefully uh, on Thursday. Okay? Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.